Hi friends, I'm Patricia Salcedo and I have the joy of serving as Assistant Director of Creative Ministry here at Stonebriar. Our church's theme for this year is connection and how vital it is for us to connect with God and with other people. So related to that, I want to start our time today with what happens in my life when I'm not connecting. When I get isolated, which for me means when I'm not spending much intentional time in prayer and God's word or talking with friends, I start believing all kinds of lies. Lies about who I am, lies about what the world is like, and most significantly, lies about who God is. And these lies lead me to doubt God's goodness and his purpose for my life. They cause me to be irritable and unkind to those around me. They cause me to feel hopeless and anxious and all kinds of things that God, our loving Father, does not want for my life or for yours. And there's no questioning where these lies come from. In John 8, 44, Jesus calls the devil a liar and the father of lies. And in 1 Peter 5, 8, we're told to be alert because the devil, our great enemy, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. So how does one battle the lion of lies? By fighting back with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. The word of God tells us Jesus is victorious over sin, death, and the devil. So we can bravely use the sword of the spirit against the lies of the enemy. A way that I wield the sword of the spirit is by keeping a truth journal. This is where I write down the lies so that I get them out of my head and I can see them for what they are. <clears throat> Next to the lie, I'll write a Bible verse or several that expose the lie and cut through it making way for the truth. Through this process, I can feel the Spirit of God drawing me into closer connection with Him, and out of that secure relationship, I'm in a better place to connect with other people. I'd like to give you some examples from my truth journal and encourage you to try something like this in your own life. The first lie is that I have to be good enough for God to love me and to be of value. But the truth is that I can't earn God's love, and he doesn't ask me to. The truth, as Ephesians 2 puts it, is for it is by grace you have been saved through faith. And this is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. Another lie is that I'm actually pretty great, and I don't really need a savior. But the truth found in Romans 3.23 is that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. I am not perfect. I have broken God's law to love God and love others. And I need Jesus as my savior. Another lie is that there is no hope. The lie is that there is too much brokenness, too much pain to keep on living. But the truth found in Lamentations 3 is this. I will never forget this awful time as I grieve over my loss, yet I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease. The last lie I'll talk about is the most haunting. The lie is that God doesn't love me. Now I could list countless verses here because the entirety of the Bible is the story of God rescuing and redeeming his creation because of his unwavering love for us. But a verse that I write down often is Romans 5, 8. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Make no mistake, friends. God loves us. In fact, as 1 John 4 says, God is love. And that is the truth. If you've never heard the truth that God loves you and sent his son Jesus to be your savior, please reach out to our staff here at Stonebriar. We would love to talk with you and point you to God, who wants a relationship with you. You can reach us anytime 
at info at stonebriar.org or come visit us on a Sunday. Come and find connection. Come and find truth. Come and find hope. I'm praying for you today, friends, and I hope to see you soon.